That is very interesting. Y'all gonna just keep on knocking on my door. Oh, it's just y'all. Uh, my fault. I'm in Atlanta now. Things are different. You said, what are these? These are the animal instinct. You should go get you a pair. They are available now. This is premium Italian leather. No cap, no cut. And guess what? These are definitely performance shoes. I hoop in these. Performance video coming soon. Hey, but check this out. This interview uh, I did with JP the third. He actually interviewed me this time. So he's getting my my perspective, my lifestyle journey, and a few other uh, little gems that I just dropped in there for y'all. So, oh, these are available too. Check the website. We got multiple colors. Uh, they are definitely Greek inspired. If you're Greek, you definitely should you should grab one of these. If you're not Greek, they're still cool to go grab. So get these. Get these. And tune in, cause we finna get lit. Awesome. Welcome to another episode of the Champion Cultivator. Yes, sir. Uh, first episode of season two. So happy to be back. Got a special guest for this uh, this today's episode. Got my man Fine Wine in the building. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh, entrepreneur, coach. Yeah. Uh, creator of We Just Living. Oh, my guy is. Out here, man. I appreciate being here. No, man. for sure. Appreciate being here. Like, the way we connected was crazy. So, hey, uh, <laughs> straight up, straight up. But it was a blessing, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, straight up. I don't run into a lot of people who, I don't know, just in the same lane. Or, yeah. yeah. Especially from St. Louis or in St. Louis. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people who have good intentions or good presentations. Yeah. But it's just like the the reality don't always match up. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, just listening to you speak last week, we actually spoke at the same engagement yeah, at uh, sure. the OSTL Foundation. Shout out to Tamara. Shout out to Tamara. You know what I'm saying? 100%. But we connected and I don't know, bro. It just made sense to have you on the show. So yeah. I'm happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, but that, uh, that uh, I just call this show that we did, um, man, that w I was kind of, I was trying to be cognizant of what I needed to be, you know, to say to the people and it was just like, well, nigga, you teach this every day. <laughs> so it's just like, just go off of what you know. Yeah. And because I was just trying to, you know, be the best, try to be the best speaker I know how to be, but it's like, okay, you, you took classes in college to learn how to speak, but it's like, you still have to sell yourself. Yeah. You got to sell your brand and it's like, well, I'm trying to still sell this lifestyle as well. And it's like, you know, once you learn how to be the authentic you, you can do whatever you want to do. Definitely. And that's why, you know, I got a brand we just live in. It's a hashtag. That's facts. Yeah. And what you just said, as soon as you learn to be who you want to be, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's huge. We were just talking about, you know, being able to, to sell yourself to other people. Yeah. But in order to sell yourself to other people, you got to sell yourself to yourself. Bam. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand that. They be trying to put backing behind something that they don't truly believe in. And they wonder why it falls apart. Yeah. That's why I say don't believe in the hype because it's not yeah. it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it if the, if I'm not if the person's not gonna put the work in. So it's just like you gotta know it, now. Once you start investing, like when you got the show now, you start know, learning smart investments. Yeah, that means your time, your energy, who you spend time with. You just start seeing so okay, that doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna spend time over here until I see this get right. Right. Not that you don't care, or not that you you know you don't give it hope, but it's like if you like we just talked before the show. A lot of people say they ready yeah. and they want to perform. But when it's time to perform on a constant, consistent basis, you know what I'm saying? You ball up and go to the corner. <laughs> this is this is something that we want, though. Yeah. You know, like when you, I, that's why I love that I'm born in the 90s because we, uh, social media wasn't as prevalent. Right. Like, you got to think about it. If you wanted to be out here, you had to have a, first, if, if you just think about the music industry, you had to have a song and you had to have an arsenal of just either lyrics, freestyles, or, you know, uh, songs ready to go at any minute like you had to be able to drop whatever you're doing and spit that mm -hmm. and now people don't know how to do that no more you know what i'm saying it's instant access now which is i mean making more million well thousandaires let's you know what i'm saying yeah. not a lot of millionaires but a lot of thousandaires but it's not giving them like they don't have a a second step another pivot which is you know you show your hand and then then what me yeah. you got to figure another way that's real. People don't be prepared. That's real. But no, before we even dive super deep, just uh, for the people who aren't aware of who you are, I want to dive into a backstory. That was kind of like just a uh, off the off the rip sneak peek. So right, that <laughs> you know off, the <laughs> off the cuff. Yeah, it's definitely some fire in store for you all. But you know what I'm saying, Jay. I just want you to take a step back, introduce yourself. Kind of how did you find yourself in this position, and just let the people know who you are. Well, first off, I want to give a shout out to the Almighty. Whatever you want to call them, I'm with it. You know, <laughs> let's just put it right there. Yeah. Uh, second of all, give a shout out to my parents. You know, uh, for allowing me to be 
the person who I grew to be, bro, I had blonde hair, I wore skinny jeans, right. so that was just all discovery yeah. of just learning my style, learning my flavor, and, you know, shout out, I got a party tomorrow, it's called Love It Up, and that was, that's just a reflection of my thoughts, my processes, and my successes, and so, um, it was, I'm from Decatur, Illinois, by the way, so it was one day after I graduated college, and most, you know, most people know the stories once you get out of college. It's hard finding a job. Yeah. And if you got your own company, you need people to support. And we already know how that goes. So we don't go, <laughs> you know, support looks like different ways, but if you're not getting what you need, then, you know, it can send you to, through different emotions. Yeah. Let me say that. So yeah. my emotion is to send me through <laughs> depression. So through doing my depression, you know, sometimes I, I, didn't, I didn't have money like that, so I didn't have food in the house. So I would just eat, sleep, basically. Yeah. That, was my, that, was my, that was my food right there. And so one day I was laying on the couch, I was probably drunk, for real, drunk and high, and uh, one of the two were maybe just in my feelings. It was probably definitely drunk. And um, I was like, who am I? Like, why do people like me? Why am I, you know, you having that self-realization, I think I was 26 at the time, going on 27. And I'm like, I'm not the most flyest, never been the most handsomest, never been the most anything. But people like that I bring to the game, because I'm thinking about when I play sports, like the coaches, the opposing coaches used to come up and just tell me, thank you for, you know, you're a good player. You know, they wouldn't say nothing to my other teammates but because of my effort I put in. Yeah. So I'm like, I just bring a little flavor to the game. And so with that, I'm like, you know, I think about an art fashion show. I'm like, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. And so it was for inspiring models, inspiring uh, artists. Like if you perform, like artists, meaning painters. Rappers, singers, whatever you do, we gonna figure a way. So my the model that I had in my mind was the BET Rip the Runway. So I put that together. So that gave people a chance if they never had a platform. Cause I, you know, when you have a network, you'll see how big and the type of access you get when it's your turn to you know shine. And so once I gave people the opportunity, a lot of people's stardom took off. You know, no, some people never noticed somebody, and then they're their flavors, and then oh, I remember you. Now they got all these different shows, and I'm not capping. Yeah. This is this is the honest uh, truth, and so uh, flavors help build a lot of the models you see self esteem or self efficacy if you want to be real with the words, um, self efficacy to be better and live their true selves, that's and that's cool. how I got here. So it was just like that that you had that flash inspiration on the couch, and then what did it look like the rest of that process just just turning around. Well, my mom made me get a job, you know, because my aunt and my, my mom and her husband, Thomas, uh, my stepdad, they would help finance some of my living. And then my aunt, uh, she helped on this, you know, look for a couple months. And then it was like, Jamarius, that's my real name. Uh, you got to figure it out because we can't, you know, at this point in time, I'm 25, 26. I can't be having my mom take care of me, you know, so I got to figure it out. So I had to get a job as a security guard. So this is how the real story started. So I'm, this is the worst job. I hated it. Um, but it was an easy job, but it was from 3 to 11. But I would, would, I would just drive around the whole time. In that time, we were supposed to be writing our booklets. Like, you know, we stopped here, we stopped here. But now I'm just writing down things and ideas. Everything I thought of that I, you know, I knew I wanted to accomplish. And then I said, once I get my chance and opportunity, I'm gonna take it. So then I got another job which created financial freedom to start start thinking different and better and progressively. And that's that. Yeah. Facts. That's dope, bro. Yeah. That's dope. Definitely I think there's power and and being able to see it. And there's power and clarity too. I think yeah. that's one of the things that uh, sticks out to me in that story that you just told is you didn't really you know what I'm saying, you was lost. Yeah. But once you had that direction, once you knew, uh what you wanted it's crazy man when you think about it my whole time in st louis i've had somebody to lean on whether it's been friends whether it's been relationships i've had somebody to lean on and then those last these last two years it was just like just me like you know i couldn't call my mom and you know uh because she got married and it was just like i gotta be a man for myself and it's like well i gotta so i had to pick up my own pants and let's get it like I work, but I, one one of my realizations or epiphanies was I was teaching. I'm like, the last couple of days I was walking past a piece of paper on my ground, and I'm like, somebody gonna pick it up. But when you think about it, you live by yourself. If it's there on the ground, you live by yourself. If it's gonna, who gonna, if you want to throw it away and it's going on the ground, you gonna get it on. You gotta do it. Yeah. 
And I realized if you want something done, you got to do it. Nobody else. I'm just let that sit for a second. That's a fact. <laughs> for real. Like, I'm going to let that sit for a second because it's so easy to want something without actually realizing the work that you're going to have to put in and how consistent it's going to have to be. Again, that's what we was talking about in the pre-show. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's a, another... I don't know. It sounds simple, but people don't actually execute on it. It's, they don't. And then once the work starts piling, like you, you can, you can have a breakthrough to get what you want. Mm -hmm. But what you know, when people start wanting stuff from you, because you just ain't, you can't do stuff just for you. Right. There's not enough money in that. That's facts. <laughs> so you got to do stuff with other people. You got to, you know, what I'm saying people want to pay you to do what you do. So you say you got 10, 15 people like. Oh, I want this. So now yeah. you say, oh yeah, you get all the money. So now in your bank, you got, let's say 10 racks. You got to deliver on all that on a timely manner. You going, what you going to do? Sink, fold, stay strong. Yeah. It's hard. And that mental, it's a mental warfare. Yeah. Because you, you have trouble finding that can, that, that balance and consistency. And so, but once you find your rhythm, then you can, you can actually go with it. But it's a constant, and what I'm learning now is a constant practice every day. Yeah. Or a constant practice every other day. Whatever your routine is, it's constant. That, Cause that's how you actually get better and you start seeing and hearing start di differently. Uh, I can 100% attest to that, man, just because I've experienced it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've experienced being up, I've experienced being down. And what I know is, you know what I'm saying? When I was up, what I was doing was different from when I was down. Yeah, and when you start to notice these different trends, like okay, you can start to correlate. Well, this happens when I do this, therefore I shouldn't do this, and it's it's crucial. You mm -hmm. got to be able to reflect and really look and learn from your your own mistakes as well as the mistakes of others. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not gonna get what you want to get. It's insane if you keep on doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Factual. Actual, factual. So you got this party going on tomorrow. Facts. And we was talking about this before the, you know what I'm saying, before the show, the pre-show. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the name of it. So it's called Leveled Up. Yeah, yeah Leveled Up. Yeah. I was going to let you shout that out again. Shout out and, to Leveled Up. Hey, shout out to Leveled Up. You know what I'm saying? We up one. Hey. You know, it's a moving too. The We Up one. I talked about that yeah. at the, uh, the conference. And it's just like, you know, I got somebody texted me yesterday saying, oh, I'm inspired. I like your work. I admire what you're doing. I'm like, well, and they, they're trying to, they want me to help them do something. I'm like, We Up one. You know, not that the fact that they want me to do it, it's the yeah. fact that you are inspired to do what you want to do. Literally. Yeah. This podcast, we up one. We up one. We up one. <laughs> For real, we up two, because there's two cameras right here. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> two different angles. So, you know, that's a winner yeah. in my book. Definitely. But what I wanted to bring up about this, uh, your event, you know yeah. what I'm saying, Leveled Up, is that was one of the, the blocks that I had to get over uh, mentally, mm -hmm. is I wouldn't recognize the work I was doing. So... I would only reflect on the good things, but I also I wouldn't reflect Ooh, same. on mm -hmm. or I wouldn't I wouldn't recognize like the work I was doing because I wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't matter. I didn't need a pat on the back because I wasn't there yet. But in reality, that's like trying to drive a car from, you know, what I'm saying from coast to coast, from New York to California. And you're like, I'm not going to put no gas in this car until I get there. Yeah. You know, but yeah. that's like the mentality I had. I, I don't deserve any kind of praise because I'm not there yet. And so it would lead to this negative spiral of negative emotions, which leads to negative actions. So then I just wasn't living the way I wanted to live. True. And it's like, you know, when you think about once you don't, you don't think you deserve that, but you, in reality, you know, you do. Because a lot of people that are still asleep and just wait, walking in the system, working in the system, let me say it like that. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, you do deserve a pat me on the back, but it's like, okay, the world worked again now. Like, okay, you can say you want to do this. You got it. You bought the camera. <laughs> All right, now what? Right. You know, so there are different standards at every level. And so once you accomplish those, like when I got my last job, today is my last uh, day at that job. And um, I didn't know how to celebrate the small victories at first. You know, I would always want the big victory because I've never won a championship before. Um, in the sports side, I wanted to. Like in football, I've won championships, but in basketball, I haven't won a championship. And so I haven't even had a regionals title. And so like though, but you gotta think about it. How far have you came that whole season? Like you've developed, you got a college scholarship. Those are small victories. Those are, yeah. the college scholarship is a big victory, but it's like you are so steady focused on this one. It's like you've done so much other than that. 
And so once you just, yeah, pat yourself on the back, we came a long way. Yeah, yeah. big facts. But it's like being able to recognize that, man, was a, a big blessing for me because yeah. it was just like I would block my own blessings uh -huh. because I didn't understand that I was doing better than I thought. I had to have other people like hold that, uh, the mirror up for me. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely think that's something key that yeah. I help people. I know we want to talk about mental health. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Just by putting that information out, I know we up another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to. We got to. And I hope this. And the thing is, I'm not here to save people, you know, but I'm here to get you more aware of your surroundings. Nice. As my boss would always say, like, you want to know, you want to know the temperature in the room that you're going into. And so if you are aware of certain things of just soft skills, like, come on, I, I'm just giving reality, you know, game out. Like, I'm not here to give any fictitious storylines or whatever. I'm just this is what I know. This is what is facts. This is what happens in reality. And so this is what happened when you treat people like this. This would be the pattern if, you know, this goes or the consequence. And so I just try to give out real game. And it's like, it helps sets me free because I don't have to act like anything I don't want to. Hey. I'm like, that's it. The <laughs> bombs, man. We just, <laughs> I'm saying. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. That's a huge takeaway. That's freedom in that. Yeah, so celebrate, bro. You know? Most people say, well, shit, if anything go wrong, we still living. Man, and when I get inspired, when people just travel and just, I see them doing them or, you know, trying new things. Man, it looks good. It touches my heart. It's just like, because the way we just living began, I seen my mom and a couple of friends go out of the country. And they just taking pictures on uh, RVs and in the water and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, my people living. Mm -hmm. It was fine because I was, I was still in college. It was probably my last year in college. Yeah. And uh, it was in December. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm on, my, my boy was, I think he was in Rome with his girl at the time. And they all take a picture. I'm like, I'm, on the, I'm in the bed. And I'm like, damn, these people are really living. Having fun, enjoying their they real lives. And I'm like, well, we just living. Hashtag it. Something we do. That's real. So what I want to ask you about um, is... So for me, I know that sometimes trying to be a leader or being a leader, yeah. there's going to be times where you're not as consistent as you need to be, mm -hmm. but you're still fulfilling that, that leadership role. So it can almost kind of be like this uh, contradiction. So starting off, you know what I'm saying, where you're on the couch and you're not really uh, operating in purpose or living in purpose, and you see these other people are, and you, you, know, you saw that hashtag and that opportunity within it, how did you, uh, you know what I'm saying, realign yourself with that opportunity or like realign your identity to the opportunity mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah yeah yeah. it's almost like how diddy re, uh he always reinvents himself almost what every seven to ten years mm -hmm. so i just started listening to my audience my real audience and it's like we tired of going to parties we tired of doing this we tired of going to this person's party you know and when it's just like okay i never i'm not the party thrower you know, if I'm doing parties at an event, like, so it's a pool party, skate party, something like that we did in high school to have fun. Like, I'm tired of going to parties. I was tired of going to parties, just sitting around. And if I'm not, if I am got my camera, then that's the only way I'm moving around and having fun. So I was like, I'm going to do my own, but I'm going to do it a little different. Like, so I did a pool party uh, with live performance, you know. Uh, before that, it was like, it, it was a whole situation out of day. Uh, skate party, you know, or just different events. We did the Moet, don't drop. So if I'm doing a, a party, it's like I'm actually doing it with, for a purpose. And when I realize, because the thing is, this and this is a sidebar, uh, Leveled Up came about when uh, one of the club owners at Dos Silas came up to me. And I was just doing photography. He was like, can you come help with our promotion scene? I'm like, yeah, that's not a problem because hey, that's extra money. I'm with it. <laughs> and on. so, right, so then I'm, I went in on Friday, and, you know, I came in real professional, it was like, well, you know, pr promotions is cool, but we want to start doing events on, you know, once a, a, a month on this certain day. I'm like, okay, that's cool with me. And he was like, we want you, you think you can do the party? I'm like, bro, I'm never, you know, throwing a party by myself at a club. So I'm like, all right, okay, um, I'll think about that. You know what I'm saying? But it was like another bag coming in. So come on, I'll take it. So then I'm just like, okay, what am I going to call it? You know, so I had a few names. I can't even remember some of them. But then I was like, leveled up. And so that's how that came about. And it's just, you know, it's for the people that, the working class. 
you know? And so, that's kind of, I hope I answered the question. Kind of in a way, but it was, it was like a, a tangent, but I'm going to dig back into the, the yeah. to the deeper question. Okay. So it's like, you're, this is like a, I, I want to identify like this mental component, right? Yeah. So here you was at point A, you was down and out, you right. was on the couch, and you see these people that they live in, and you see that opportunity, we just live in. Mm -hmm. And then there's point B where it's like, I'm taking action on this, and I'm creating this as, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm realizing this opportunity. So my question for you is, what's that mentality shift? Because it's like, you was down and out. So then it's like, how, how can you stand behind this brand that we just live in if you wasn't living? You know what I mean? Like, it was like, your, your self-identity, like, you, was, you wasn't in alignment with that. But now, you know what I'm saying, you're in a completely different space. So it's like, for some people, whenever they're trying to level up or they're mm -hmm. trying to just get it, they see that opportunity, but they also know that they're not congruent with that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't really embrace, congruent. you know what I'm saying? Evil. They don't really embrace, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't really embrace that they can adjust themselves. So kind of, how did you do that for yourself? That way other people can still get, you know what I'm saying, that same game. So when you say we just live in how you feel, what you mean? Like, I, if I say we just living? Yeah. I mean, we just living, you know what I'm saying? I put a smile on my face, I feel great. Uh, I'm just grateful to, to be alive, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, it just makes me feel grateful and centered in a moment. And how, you know, and that makes you feel congruent to what? Uh, to... Winning. Uh, essentially, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, so it was just certain sacrifices I had to make to, you know, be more successful, which makes me feel congruent to be able to do as some other great people do. And it's like, okay, you just gotta do it a little different or you gotta work a little harder. But it just takes, you know, the, if, you, if we're asking about the actions behind it, it's like, um, I've never seen my name on the back of a jersey. So that's why. And it's just like, I'm, I'm grinding as hard as I can to have my name tied in the rap list. So, I still don't think I answered the question. No, I was gonna say, so it's just like, you, you just really, you got a purpose for yourself. And it was like, so you was living. So it was just like, you, you changed what you was in alignment with. So, yeah. I mean, I've always lived, man. I've always lived a, a healthy life, meaning, you know, being able to be, you know, live in abundance. It's not any, but I hold my back, self back because I feel like, like you said earlier, you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, shit, you got so much other things you need to think about because we're black men. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, we have the black men. You also got to have, just because you got this covered and these people have it covered, you got to have something else covered too. So it's like, you always got to think about the next step. And so with doing leveled up, it's like, okay, I only do, I only did those parties for promotion because that was going to set me up to have a bigger stage than what I have now. And you can see what it's got me here. Yeah. And you know, in a real podcast. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so everything is a, definitely is a, is a setup for a bigger setup. Definitely. Yeah. It's really just it comes down to your perspective is what I'm hearing from you, bro. It definitely comes down from your perspective. When you yeah. stop focusing on one thing, you then make room for something else. Mm -hmm. And then like you said, it leads to the next thing. It's, it's you know what I'm saying, that domino leads to the next domino. Yeah, fact. St. Louis leading this uh ATL. One camera lead to two cameras. And, you know, one camera and two cameras lead to a cameraman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Literally. And so you just got to be patient. You know, it's definitely a process. I've learned what processes look like on a different in, on different stages. So it's like once, and you can't rush it because once you rush it, it looks like it looks. And you can't do nothing about it. Once you want to give it to the crowd, like we talked about, you know, it's good. You want to put something out, something so bad, but, you know, make sure it's, you know, the best, if it's not the best quality, make sure it's, the best quality you know how. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, so it may you may have to actually go and buy some software you can crop certain things, but it just needs to be on the best level you know how. Like I was watching on the way here, uh, Nick Cannon's interview with Kevin Hart, straight from the heart, and he was asking how Wild and Out got started. They had a couple cameras in a comedy, just a comedy uh uh, like a skit, like a routine, or like no, space? like a space, like uh, a like comedy space, like one a venue bar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he just pulled up the camera. Some friends came through. It it doesn't look the best. While and out wasn't, you know what I'm saying, at first. Yeah. But they had a pilot, and if you got a pilot, you can ship that anywhere. And then if, if it's good enough, and that's when people are saying people want to be the best. Mm -hmm. When you and this that's a mental thing. You want to be the best. Okay, cool. But what's better than being the best? 
having a foot in the door. Right. Ooh, I never said that before. <laughs> never said that before. Because if you got a foot in the door, that means you're good enough. And if you're good enough, one day you'll be good enough to be in the place where you want to be. So shit, I'm one foot in the door. What y'all need me to do? Oh, y'all need me to run to go get coffee? All right. Yeah. You gonna know my face though. You gonna know? You know oh, okay. What else you do in passing? Oh, y'all video photographer. Why don't you got your camera? Oh man, you know I'm, I'm just doing this. Well, I want you to come work for me. It's this amount of pay. I appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> we gonna talk about it. Literally. So you know you just gotta be. You gotta be hungry for you it. You gotta 100%. be hungry. You gotta be hungry. People for it. love so you. Hungry. Start at, you know what I'm saying? If you start at the base, it, like you can't just step one, you the best. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's a process. You gotta embrace it. It's a process. And even even when you the best, you still got it. You can't think you the best. There's other other people before you haven't even been able to go against. Which requires hu constant hunger, so you yeah. can have that constant growth. Because if you're not growing, you can't call yourself the best. You can have a better you longevity. Eat <laughs> better longevity, like LeBron. He has a better, longer career than Michael Jordan. Yeah. But in the, a certain span, we can say Michael Jordan had the best career. I'm an Allen Iverson fan. I'm gonna say you know he's the best player ever. Eat. But you know, he had a foot in the door to be one. That's a conversation. Hey, that's look, that's a lot better than me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. I never had my foot in that door. Nah, probably. But just not. having a foot in the door and being in the discussion, man, that's a that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because somehow your name got into the conversation. And that's a booster for, you know, your mental because now you see people paying attention to you. Yeah. And when people start paying attention to you, that means okay, you're doing something right. Keep doing the same thing you're doing right. You know? And then after you're doing that for a while, okay, you got to throw them off a little bit. And that could be, oh, he sing too? Okay. It's good. Okay. Pops more act acting back. So now you show your, your, you diversify your portfolio. So now you can get booked for anything. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, give out what, give love, out game, man. man. That's a look. Look, that's what the podcast is for. <laughs> trying to give out game. I don't want to, just like the kind of person I am, I don't believe in doing something and not, uh, I, obviously, I'm doing it so I'm gonna get a value out of it for myself. Yeah. But doing like a, a podcast and sharing this with other people, I'm not mm -hmm. doing this to waste my time, your time, or the people who are gonna watch this time. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? If I create something, it's because I want it to to better somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like to provide value. I get fulfillment out of it. Same, know. same. Because it's just like we up one. You see some man. I, I feel like DJ Khaled when I say that. <laughs> he said another one. Should I say we up one? Because it's just like. Any moment you can have a you know, a whole blame thing, and then next thing you know, somebody call in, somebody feel you know inspired. We up one, easy. Like one of them telethons. Every time we up. It's one. weird though, for real, man. Cause like most people have like that crab in the in the barrel mentality, but like the we up one. I'm I'm always grateful. Like even if like I'm tight with somebody, and mm -hmm. then time goes by and we not as close, yeah. but I still see that they doing good. I still see that they eating. That makes me I'm grateful for that because. If this person can live in a potential and achieve this level of greatness, that means it's possible for me too. Exactly. They just, they, I'm a person, they a person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, facts. Facts. Like, but people be mad about that. We are we both <laughs> are persons. You know, no matter the gender. Yeah. And so yeah, I definitely agree with that. And so if you still can shine without without me, good you know, more power to you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Now, you know, I come out support, you know. We might not be the coolest, but Hey, I'm glad to see you doing what you're doing. Always. For sure. I've never been like, I don't know, I'm just not a hater. No. Nah, <laughs> I don't know nothing nah. else to categorize it as. Now, I will tell facts. Yeah. I will say facts. Oh, how was the party? I will. Could have, you know. I yeah. will tell facts. Mm -hmm. You know. If you come to my party, it's going to be my the type of party that I like. You know, I'm DJing my party at 11 o'clock. So, you know, if you want to get turned to DJ such and such, that's my DJ name. <laughs> <laughs> It's my AKA. AKA. You know, I'm trying to really keep on reinventing myself. Because, you know, you got Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa, they DJs too. But they're not like actual, you know what I'm saying? But they they got a playlist that type of vibe. Okay. Yeah. If I become a real a big time celebrity, people might hire me to just come DJ for an hour. Thousand, $100,000. I'll take it. It's that mindset of possibility, bro. I think yeah. that's one of the things that I yeah. fuck with about you. You had a mindset of possibility. Most people are like, this is a possibility, but for other people, not for me, type thing. But, you know what I'm saying, you recognize this is a possibility, not only for others, but also for you. Man, facts. And when, I think once you just introduce to certain, like, bro, once I found out, bro, this is my watch. Mm -hmm. My brand. It got you a J3. It? Oh, shit. J3 watch. You know what I'm saying? I got the same tattoo on my chest. 